Welcome back everyone. Today we learn about electromagnetism. What is a magnetic field? A magnetic field is a region of space in which a magnetic object experiences a magnetic force. The magnetic field lines flow from the north to the south. In most compasses, the north needle of the compass could point in the same direction of the magnetic field lines. Magnetic field lines have a direction, suggesting that they are vectors. When drawing field lines, they should not overlap with each other. The more concentrated the field lines are, the stronger the region of the magnetic field. In this chapter, we will discover the magnetic field of a long wire, a circular coil, and a solenoid. Let us discuss the magnetic field of a wire. Take a look at the diagram below. You will observe that the field lines are made of concentric circles. The direction of the magnetic field lines can be seen with the right-hand thumb rule. The strength of a magnetic field at a point weakens when the distance of the point increases from the wire. Of course, it will be difficult to draw the diagram in 3D. Hence, we have to learn some conventions to draw the field lines in 2D. Look at these two diagrams. To denote a field line going into the paper, we represent it with a cross. To denote a field line going out of the paper, we use a dot. These two symbols can be used to represent either the current or the magnetic field. It would be easier to visualize them as the view of an archery arrow. When the arrow goes into the paper, we see a cross, and when the arrow points towards us, we see a dot. Here is what we can see from the side of the wire. The field lines nearest to the wire are much closer together as compared to those far away from the wire. This means that we can say that the magnetic field strength at region 1 is stronger than that at region 3. This can be said the same with region 2 and region 4. Now, let us observe Fleming's left-hand rule. When a current is being placed in a magnetic field, a magnetic force will be produced. We use our left hand to identify the force exerted on the current. The thumb represents the force or motion of the object. The first finger which represents the magnetic field. And lastly, the center finger represents the current flowing. To use the left hand rule, we must take note that neither the direction of the force, current nor magnetic field is parallel. If the current and magnetic field is parallel, no force will be produced on the object. Here we have two scenarios with the wires. One pair where the currents are going in opposite directions and one pair where the currents are going the same direction. Parallel wires with currents going in opposite directions will repel. However, parallel wires with currents going in the same direction will attract. But why? Let us observe the scenario where the currents are in the same direction. Let us focus on the wire on the right. According to the Fleming left-hand rule, the current is going out of the paper, and the magnetic field points upwards, leading to the right wire being exerted onto the left. This can be also said the same for the left wire with the Fleming left-hand rule as shown, with the current going out of the paper, and the magnetic field going down, the wire moves to the right. As we can see from the wires, the wires are attracted to each other. As the wires get closer, we can see that in the middle, the directions of the magnetic fields from both wires cancel each other, forming a neutral point. The new magnetic force is also formed that results in the following as shown. Hence, this will be the diagram of the new magnetic field lines between the two wires. In contrast, when the currents are in opposite directions, you will notice the wires repel. Pause here to try out Fleming's left-hand rule with these two wires. By Fleming's left-hand rule, the wire moves to the right. In the left wire, the current moves out of the paper. Again, by Fleming left-hand rule, the wire moves to the left. Hence, this results in the wires to repel each other. From the diagram, you notice that the portions of the magnetic field closer to each other are in the same direction, and hence this amplifies the magnitude of the magnetic field in between the wires in that direction. This results in the overall magnetic field as shown. 
In fact, with the magnetic field lines of two wires with opposite currents as shown, we can also use this principle for a magnetic field of a coil, resulting it being drawn as shown. When the current goes clockwise in a coil, the magnetic field goes into the paper. In contrast, when the current flows anti-clockwise, the magnetic field moves out of the paper. We can remember this visually by using the right hand thumb rule. The strength of the magnetic field at a point weakens when the distance of the point increases from the wire. Magnetic field strength at W is larger than X as the field lines are more concentrated than at X. Now, let us take a look at solenoids. Here is a diagram of a solenoid and its magnetic field. When a current passes through the solenoid, it acts as a temporary magnet with the north and south poles. Notice that the magnetic field is concentrated in the solenoid as compared to outside the solenoid. The strength of the magnetic field is strongest within the solenoid and gets weaker at its outside. The magnetic field strength of the solenoid increases by adding more coils or increasing the current. We can determine the position of the north and south poles of the solenoid by using the right hand rule. The direction of the thumb indicates the position of the north pole. The curl of the fingers represent the direction of the current in the solenoid. By looking through the solenoid, if the current is anti-clockwise, we can determine that the one closer to you is the north pole. Similarly, when the current rotates clockwise, the side closer to you is the south pole. Now, let us talk about the kicking wire experiment. When we close the switch you will notice that the flexible joint going up and down, as if it was kicking. The wire experiences a kick in the direction indicated and breaks the circuit when its lower end comes out of the pool of mercury. It falls back due to gravity, re-establishes contact with the mercury and experiences a force again. The kicking action is repeated again and again. Reversing the direction of the current reverses the direction of the kick. Recall Fleming's left hand rule? The current points downwards as shown. For the magnetic field, the direction depends on the poles of the magnet. All magnetic lines leave the north and toward the south. Hence, the magnetic field is drawn as shown. By Fleming's left hand rule, the force will be drawn towards the right. One such application for electromagnetism is direct current motors, also known as DC motors. You will be required to know about the parts of a DC motor. Here is a diagram of a direct current motor. We have the commutator. The commutator comprises of two half rings that allow the direction of current to reverse every half revolution in the coil. This allows the direction of the force applied on the coil to be maintained in a particular direction. Note that the direction of the opening in the commutator is perpendicular to the coil when the coil is horizontal. Carbon brushes are connected to the electrical source to enable the current to flow into the coil via the commutator of the motor. A permanent magnet provides the magnetic field for the coil so that movement of the coil cuts the magnetic fields to create a force acting on the coil. The coil and axle moves due to the force acting on that create a turning effect to rotate the coil about the axle. Currently, the magnetic field line is the strongest at the central location in between the two magnets and the force acting on the coil is maximum. The force acting on coil decreases as the coil becomes vertical, and the magnetic field strength reduces as it coil goes further away from the center. When the coil is vertical, the coil will switch current flow. No force will be produced as no current flow is present. However, the motion of the coil would allow it to continue its motion due to Newton's first law of motion and maintain its direction of rotation until when the current flows again. Direction of current reverses in the coil, so that the force acting on the coil remains unchanged and the rotation of the coil can be maintained in the same direction. There are two ways we can improve the DC motor. Add a soft iron cylinder, or we can increase the turning moment of the coil. 
By adding a soft iron core cylinder, we can achieve a radial magnetic field towards the coil. The soft iron core then concentrates the magnetic field lines in the core. Current flow through the coil is subjected to a uniform magnetic field that is perpendicular to the current flow. The force created is thus uniform and perpendicular to the coil. We can also increase the turning moment of the coil in the motor, which can be broken down into this equation. The force by one side of the coil is multiplied by the distance from the wire to the axle. We multiply that by 2 as the force occurs on both sides of the coil. Here is a further extension of the equation of the turning moment of the coil in the motor. In this case, the area of the coil is the product of L, the length of the coil and B, the width of the coil. Hence, the turning moment of the coil is affected by magnetic field strength, current in the coil, and the area of the coil. Now, let us talk about the effect of a charged particle. By convention, we always take current as the flow of positive charges. However, take note that in a wire, conventional current, labeled as I, is in the opposite direction as the flow of electrons, labeled as E. We can use Fleming's left-hand rule to determine the force that acts on a particle. For example, let us use the flow of positive charges. We always take conventional current as the flow of positive charges, and using the left-hand rule, we can conclude that in this scenario, the positive charges will experience a force going upwards. In the case of the flow of electrons, the conventional current will be opposite to the flow of electrons. By Fleming left-hand rule, the electrons experience a force downward. Now, let us look closely at how the particles will act when they enter between a set of plates of opposite charge but parallel to each other. For an electron beam, the beam will curve and deflect towards the more positive plate. As we increase the field strength of the plate, you will notice that the angle of deflection of the electron beam will be stronger. Now, let us try using the Fleming left-hand rule for the following scenarios. Here, we have a proton moving close to a magnet. Draw the force exerted on the particle on the plane given. The current points in the green arrow is shown and the magnetic field points towards the back. This is because the conventional current is drawn in the direction of flow of positive charges. The magnetic force is drawn as such as the charge is placed near the north pole where magnetic field lines go out. By using Fleming left hand rule, we will end up with the following diagram, whereby the force of the particle points out of the plane. Here is an electron passing by a magnetic field pointing into the paper. Draw the path of the electron. Similarly, we can draw the magnetic field as shown. Since the electron moves into the magnetic field, the conventional current points towards the left as shown. Also, be aware that the current is drawn in the opposite direction to the flow of negative charges. By Fleming left-hand rule, we get the force pointing in the direction shown. Hence, overall, by taking note of the velocity of the particle and the force exerted, we get a path drawn as shown. Lastly, we have an electron passing by a magnetic field pointing out the paper. Draw the path of the electron. We can draw the magnetic field and conventional current as shown. Also, be aware that the current is drawn in the opposite direction to the flow of negative charges. By Fleming left-hand rule, we get the force pointing in the direction shown. Hence, overall, by taking note of the velocity of the particle and the force exerted, we get a path drawn as shown. That's all for today. Thank you for the effort to learn with me. Stay tuned for more interesting lessons. See you next time. Bye-bye.